हेलो सो हेलो एवरीवन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट लिंक्ड लिस्ट इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट सो इट इज अ वेरी पॉपुलर टॉपिक एंड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डेटा स्ट्रक्चर इन एनी लैंग्वेज ओके यू कैन रेफर टू एनी अदर लैंग्वेज इफ यू नो लिंक लिस्ट इन अदर लैंग्वेजेस लाइक सी सी प्लस प्लस जावा यू कैन स्टिल इजिली लर्न इट इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट बिकॉज लिंक लिस्ट सिंपली मीन्स डैट समबडी इज रेफरिंग टू अदर ओके समबडी इज रेफरिंग टू अदर it simply means that where does harshal live harshal lives next to viraj it's like that okay so somebody can contain my address so that's how things work so we'll see that how link this actually work but before moving on in the live chat you can see that we have a link provided by geeks for geeks so that's a link for dsa course and uh, if you want to learn dsa in javascript you can go to that link and it's a dedicated course for that so why is it required first of all so dsa is actually required first of all it's a very important topic dsa it's it's said very important but specifically talking about javascript if you become a good developer you would always need dsa different kind of algorithms and data structures because obviously you want to make things optimized so you want algorithms to be optimized and things to be better things to be faster so that's why you would need dsa in javascript also and also if you learn dsa in any other language or in javascript you won't find any difference like apart from uh, logic you yeah logic will be same for everywhere but yeah the syntax would be different the code would be different but the logic is almost same okay so you can check out this course this is a paid course all right so now we can continue so let's begin with the definition first the uh, theoretical definition then i'll tell you what's my definition so a linked list is a linear data structure that is used to store a collection of elements called nodes okay so we have different kind of nodes and each node is pointing towards other nodes address okay that means i live at my house i can say my best friend lives at their house okay at his at his house so i simply will tell some other person that yeah this is the address of my friend you can go to this that person's house okay that then my friend then my friend will simply refer to other person's house it's like that okay so you are simply getting the data and also you are storing the address of the next person okay so each node contains a value and a reference link okay that means whatever you data is there okay data is there and then also a reference link pointing towards some next node okay any node but it is some node towards the next node and also if you don't have any next node you can actually point things to null okay point the node to null if you don't have any next node okay so unlike arrays linked list do not store elements in contiguous memory location so that's the benefit of linked list because in arrays suppose you have uh, you don't have contiguous memory location remaining okay you have a lot of processes going on and array actually need suppose you want to allocate an array of size 50 for that you would need an contiguous okay a contiguous memory allocation in array but in linked list you can just simply store it in parts and you can just reference them towards the next address okay so the addresses can be anywhere of each node can be anywhere suppose you want to create 50 nodes in linked list addresses can be in any sequence but in link in arrays addresses must be after one after the other that means contiguous okay that's what contiguous means so instead each node in linked list actually holds the data and pointer towards the next node so this actually saves a lot of memory and also saves a lot of time because you don't need to wait uh, if you are using array you you can actually wait for the memory to be contiguous like so you have 50 blocks free now you can create an array but in linked list you don't need to wait you can just simply assign 50 node different nodes pointing towards uh, one after the other it's like that okay they don't need to be contiguous they can just take the reference from other node and then they can be allocated so we'll see how linked is actually work and how contiguous memory uh, really changes things for us okay so the basic building block of a linked list is the node okay so a node typically consists of two components one is the data in which you will be storing any kind of data uh, this is the value and information that the node holds such as the integer string object or any other data type second is the next pointer this is a reference 
to the next node of the linked list it stores the memory address or reference for the next following node okay so if there is no next node the pointer is typically pointing towards the null okay towards some null value or some separate sentinel value which is not uh, which is actually indicates to end of the list all right but mostly you will be pointing to null if you don't have any next node available okay that means suppose if i wanted to declare 10 nodes okay now i am at the 10th node now in the 10th node you need two values one is the data for the 10th node and one is the reference for the 11th node but since you don't have the 11th node you would simply make the uh, pointer as null okay pointer towards the next address as null it's easy okay so we'll see that and uh, the first node of the linked list is always called as head so we'll be actually creating two pointers pointers one is the head node okay one is the head pointer second is the current pointer okay the current pointer will be actually used for iteration over the linked list nodes but the head pointer will always point towards the first node which you are declaring okay i hope you are getting this so it serves as a starting point or the entry point to access the elements of the list all right so now let's continue hmm so linked list actually uh, yeah so from the head you can traverse the list to the following next pointers and you can actually create a pointer named as current okay named as current the pointer name is current and which will be actually used for traversing throughout the linked list so we'll be creating two pointers head pointer and current pointer so linked list offers several advantages and use cases such as efficient insertion and deletion and uh, different kind of operation we can have dynamic size we don't need contiguous memory it has a flexibility in memory allocation however they have some limitations like compared to arrays it actually is a bit slower because of random memory allocation things actually take time for being uh, located for being found and extra memory head can be uh, used because you are storing two values one is the uh, data and second is the next memory location okay next uh, next nodes memory location so you are actually using two fields whereas in arrays you are actually using one field that is the arrays value okay arrays data so the difference between linked list and arrays is that uh, linked list is actually very great for non contiguous memory but the problem with linked list is actually it uses a little bit more memory for actually storing the references of the next pointer okay so these were the differences now uh, there are different type of linked list including uh, singly linked list where nodes have reference to one node only next node only doubly linked list where nodes have references to both next and previous nodes okay so suppose i am at a node i can go to my previous node very easily i can go to my next node very easily in doubly linked list but in single linked list the problem is if i am at a node i can i can't go to my previous node because i don't know what's behind me because i don't have address to behind node i have address to the next node okay so singly linked list simply contains the address of next node but in doubly linked list each node contains address of next and previous so obviously doubly linked list will be always storing uh, using more memory as compared to singly linked list okay so then we have circular linked list where the last node points toward the first node okay it forms a ring so we'll see all these three later on so each type has its own variation and uh, different kind of uh, they, they depend actually on specific requirements and use cases so we'll see that on upcoming videos but today we are just focusing on a single linked list and we'll be building a very basic single linked list and uh, yeah we'll be understanding first of all by drawing linked list how linked list looks okay so let's begin so what i'll do is now i'll be opening whiteboard so that you can understand better Somebody is saying, sir, Hindi mein bolye. Actually, RF I'm limited with the language because some people are from different uh, parts of the country or the world. So, please uh, try to manage with English because it's un it, it's mostly understandable by everyone. All right. Hmm. Fine. So now we have started a board and now we'll be actually formatting it a bit. Yes, fine. It looks good. Yes. 
so now i will show you how actually a linked list works and how is it different from an array then we'll be writing code for it so let's begin and just wait a minute okay so now we can continue uh sorry for keeping you wait for this long so now we can build a very basic link this so first of all let's see what an array is okay what an array is so if i draw an array it actually has some contiguous memory location suppose if i want to draw an array of size 5 okay so one two three four and let's make it five okay fine so i have uh, actually drawn an array of size five the problem with an array is actually suppose it stores values uh it's storing value 1 11 25 47 55 you can see that array looks good and yeah you can continue with an array but the problem here is suppose i just take out the address of the first block okay first block might be some having some address uh x y z some address okay some address format and suppose it's ha it's having one at the last so this is the address for first block then the address for second block will be just next after this just next after the first address the problem with this is you would be needing contiguous memory for that okay suppose if this block is not free suppose some other values have been stored so you can't just create an array of size 5 like that because you don't have free memory in between like a continuous block of five values empty values in between so the problem with array is that okay so i can just draw the complete so it's actually x y z 3 and this is having x y z 4 and this is having an address x y z 5 so this is the problem with an array suppose you don't have free values in between you can't just allocate five empty spaces for an array if you don't have free memory block of five values okay for five blocks so this is the problem with array now comes the linked list so for the linked list it's very easy you actually have different separate blocks you can just consider them as separate blocks suppose this is a square okay and suppose this is some other block i'm just assuming these are some different memories okay these are some memory blocks different memory blocks so i hope this looks good okay some random memory blocks you can see that they are some random memory blocks its address is suppose you are supposed to again storing the same values i'm storing 11 uh, 1 11 25 47 and 55 so you can see again i'm storing the same values this time i'm actually forming a linked list so i have just drawn a line here so that we can see the difference okay so above is an array and below is actually linked list okay fine so now in linked list what actually happens is it has its own address this one is actually having its own address what what can be the address the address can be actually i would say that suppose that its address is xyz 15 suppose its address is this and this will actually contain one more value which is actually the address of next node the address of next node which is actually it would actually point towards the address of next node okay it's like that so it's actually pointing towards the address of next node and suppose the address of next node is actually xyz21 uh, okay that means the address of this one is actually xyz21 okay you can see the 
this address and these this address are not contiguous they are separate they are not neighbors but still they are joined from each other because of the previous node you can see this is this is an example of singly linked list you can see that it's this first node is actually containing the address of second node okay similarly similarly uh, if i talk about the next one it has it's it contains the address of next node okay address of next node so the address of next node that is 25th one uh, you can say that suppose the next address is xyz uh, 49 okay so you can see that suppose it's storing this address again you are pointing towards some next address like this okay and it stores some address like xyz1 okay and suppose it's storing some other address and it's actually pointing towards some other address and it has value x y z 99 so you can see these are some random addresses i've just written them with blue these addresses are written with blue and you can see that one node is pointing towards other node with their address okay so i can actually know the address of 11 by simply this address okay this is the address of 11 xyz 21 is address of 11 similarly xyz 49 is address of 25 similarly uh, xyz 1 is address of 47 similarly xyz 99 is address of 55 so you can see they are not neighbors okay they are far separate from each other but still they are pointing towards each other okay that means in a singly linked list one node is pointing towards other okay simply uh, it happens in singly linked list but if you talk about doubly linked list right now a single node one contains address of next node okay but in doubly linked list it would contain address of previous node also okay address of previous node also if if it's there it would store the address of previous node so we'll see that later on but right now just let's skip that and we'll be sticking to this uh, singly linked list okay so you can see it looks like that and uh, i hope this diagram looks cool and that's how we actually store things so here you can see the benefit of linked list is actually uh, it has uh, it does not need any contiguous memory location so if you don't have a free memory block of five spaces but you have random five spaces available you can still create a linked list but if you don't have a contiguous memory block of five spaces you can't create an array okay so this is the difference the problem with linked list was it's actually consuming more memory because you need to store the data as well as the reference for next value okay next node so you are storing in a single node you are storing two values one is the data data okay second is this address second is also the address which i have written here actually this address to next node okay address to next node so a single node in linked list is actually using storing two values two different values so it's obviously taking more memory okay so i hope you have got this and now we'll be writing code for that still if you have any doubts in linked list you can ask me and today we'll be covering the very basic part in the next video we'll be covering some operations for linked list all right so let's continue okay so let's open vs code first All right, so this was the project folder and here what we'll do is we'll simply create a folder here and I'll just name it as linked list. Okay, linked list. So here what I'll do is I'll just open it with VS code. Okay, so I hope you're following me with the previous videos of mine, which I have taken in this channel. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can simply visit the Geeks for Geeks development, uh, sorry, Geeks for Geeks practice channel. And here you'll find that we have the playlist section inside this you have the playlist for data structures using javascript so you can check out this playlist all the data structures required for javascript are available here okay and if i talk about any other language still you can refer this because i have taught uh, things in easiest way and since you can write code very easily in javascript so it's better okay so you can check out this data structures playlist and if after this if you try to learn different kind of algorithms it still uh, makes things easier okay so you can check out this playlist and if you don't know how how installed how, how i installed vs code you can check out the first video okay introduction to javascript and also the second video so that you can get the basic setting up part all right so now we'll continue and here we'll simply say that i will okay I'll just name it as script1.js. Fine. Yep. Yeah. 
right so here what i'll do is i'll just create a very basic node then we'll be creating link list okay when then we'll be creating link list so uh, one thing you need to keep in your mind is head will always point head will always be the first element of the linked list okay linked list okay and current happen okay and current pointer okay i'm talking about these two pointers i'll just say head pointer will always be pointing to the first element and the current pointer which we'll be creating will always point to the current okay wherever you are okay wherever you are you can be like uh, we are traversing the link list so wherever you are you can consider that as the current pointer okay so for traversing will be used for be used for traversing but obviously initially the current pointer will be equal to head pointer okay but the head pointer won't move current pointer will keep on moving to the linked list okay so we'll see that but yeah you need to keep these things in mind so that you'll get it easier okay so now what we'll do is we'll be creating a node class so that we'll be using it again and again so i'll just say that we have a node here and inside this whenever you declare a node you would say that we have a constructor and first of all you will be providing its data okay whatever data whatever value whatever object you want suppose you are providing data 4 so a node with value 4 will be created okay a node with value 4 will be created so i'll just say that yeah just write 4 here fine and uh, for that you would simply say that this node will be having two values one is the actual data and second is what i told you the reference to next pointer okay that means the next reference to next node okay i'm sorry it's actually containing the reference to next node but initially you would mark it as null okay the initially you would just mark it as null so here you would say that this dot next equals null okay so you are just creating a node okay you are just creating a node with value 4 okay so you can consider it as an object okay as an object so you would say that suppose its data is 4 and it's pointing to some location next location which is initially null which is initially null then later on we can set it okay we can set it with some other value which will point to some other node suppose some other nodes address is x y z 1 so this is the node of some other uh, this is the address of some other node okay this is the address of some other node okay so some other node can be something like you are uh, saying that yeah this is the other node this is the other node which has address x y z 1 whose address is xyz1 now this next node this other node is again pointing to some other node the third node xyz2 so xyz2 can be actually uh just a minute fine okay so xyz2 can be some other node like you would say that we have it here data and i would say that some other node value is six and this time i would say that this is the last node so since it is the last node you can simply mark it as null you can simply mark it as null so you can see that it's actually storing three values but at some random addresses okay this must be having some different address but it's pointing to xyz1 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 will be some node xyz1 is this node xyz1 is this node now this node is containing two things one is the data next is the next reference next nodes address xyz2 now xyz2 will be located xyz2 has two values one is the data six and next is the address of next node since i would say that this is my last node so i would simply consider next as none okay very easy so here what i'll do is uh, initially okay one more thing initially where will be my head pointer my head pointer will be actually pointing to four okay pointing to four because this is my first node okay and then head pointer will always be at four because since this is my first pointer okay first uh, node since you uh, if you change later on the first node then you can change the head pointer but right now we would consider that we don't need to change the first uh, node okay whatever is the value no address no change somewhere okay we don't need to perform any delete operation in this we would simply say my first node is 4 head pointer will be always pointing to 4 okay then what about the current pointer current pointer will be also 
initially pointing towards 4 but then the current pointer will be used for iteration that means it will next point to 5 then it will point to 6 it's like that okay but head pointer will always be point to first node okay so now we have created a node okay and initially i haven't given any value to the uh, addresses okay to the next addresses so initially they all will be null okay they all will be null so for removing the confusion we would consider that yeah we have created only one node and it has data 4 and it's pointing to some null address okay that means we don't have any value right now next value right now okay so now we'll do one thing we'll simply create a class as linked list okay class as linked list now inside this here we would simply create a, a constructor why we would create a constructor because we need to decide the value of head okay so we would simply say that constructor inside this you would just say that we have a head pointing to initially you would be saying that yeah initially the head will be pointing to null okay initially the head will be pointing to null all right but then you will be creating a node okay right now you can consider that no node has been created we don't have any nodes so head will be pointing to null okay head has null value now what we'll do is we will perform an append operation append operation simply means creating a node and linking the previous node with the current node okay append operation so for that we will say that we have append operation it simply means adds new node to the end of the list okay not anywhere in between not before any node just after all the nodes which have been created and a new node will be added okay it's like that so append operation it's something like that we have different kind of operations also we have uh, uh, we have prepend operation that means right now we are adding things at the end of the list but prepend simply means add before the current okay add before the first okay so we'll see that prepend operation later on don't worry about that but right now you can say that suppose we have four elements okay we have initially have four elements one two three and four now append operation if i talk about append operation it would simply add a new element at the end of this linked list okay i hope you got this so it will add new element at the end of this list okay so now we'll simply say that for that we'll simply say that append inside this we need to just provide the data no address nothing okay you just need to provide the data so here data can be suppose uh, right now you can see that we don't have any node okay we don't have any nodes we don't have any nodes so we would simply say that we have zero nodes okay this is our first case if we have zero nodes that means the head is actually pointing to null head is pointing to null so first of all let's create a node whenever you are appending you will always create a node so here you would simply say that const and then you would say that we are trying to create a new node and it actually is an instance of class node which we have created above inside this you will just provide the data okay whatever is the data suppose some value like 4 is there so 4 will be show uh, fill 4 will be stored in this node okay now this dot data equals 4 and this dot, dot next equals none okay for this specific node so now we have created a node we have created a node but we need to store the node okay we need to store the node so for that what can we do is this is the first case that means we have no nodes before okay we this is the first node which we are going to create that means we have zero nodes so for this case obviously the head will be null initially whenever you are declaring a linked list head will be null so here i would say that whenever you are creating your first node head will be null right so here you would say that if head equals null then this will be the first case else we would just add things at the last okay add things at the last okay add at last position okay fine this is for the second case but the first case is you don't have any nodes here okay so this is the first case all right so now what we'll do is we will be assuming that we don't have any value so we'll be following the first case here you would say that this dot head is actually pointing to my current node what i simply mean is let's draw this okay let's draw this so what i'll do is here i'll say that right now you don't have any nodes okay so case one here you would say that yeah suppose this is the case one 
fine this is the case one and here you would simply say that we have no nodes okay no nodes so okay fine so we have no nodes we'll simply say we'll simply declare a node we'll simply declare a node okay nodes value is suppose 4 okay nodes value is suppose 4 and the head pointer okay the head pointer will be actually pointing towards this node head pointer is actually pointing towards this node okay very easy so this is what we are going to do in the first case all right so here you would simply say that this dot head equals new node we are pointing towards the new node first node okay so for more clarity i would simply say first node okay this is for the first node now we have more than one node so this will be the second case now inside this you would simply say that the current the current pointer i told you that the current pointer will be initially pointing to head pointer okay will be having the value of head pointer but then we will be using iteration for the current pointer that means next node next node next node it's like that okay so here i would simply say that initially initialize current to head okay so for that you can simply say let current so this is our pointer and it actually has the value of the first node or the head okay you would say or the head so it will be starting from here the iteration will be starting from here so what i'm trying to say is suppose uh, you can assume my linked list you can assume my linked list suppose my first value is 4 okay first value is 4 and it has some address xyz okay it's pointing to some address xyz then you can say it has some second value and it has some address abc okay and again it's like that so you can see that i have created a very basic linked list and what i'm trying to say is initially the head will be pointing towards this and the current is also pointing to here head won't move but we will be using current for iteration that means current is initially here then we'll move current to the next address that is 2 comma abc next address is what xyz which is actually storing 2 comma abc then i'll be moving to next address what is the next address it's abc that is this one okay that is 3 comma 4 so the current will be pointing to this one then what i'll do is i'll just check that um, am i at the last address am i at the last address? that means after this it must be null if there is null if there is null okay what would actually happen is oh i did a mistake it actually needs to be null here okay yeah now it's fine so what actually happens is it would check that if this address if the next address is null this simply means that i am at the end i can actually now perform append operation okay now if i want to append something what i'll do is i'll just store the next nodes of address okay i'll create a next node and i would say that my next nodes address is pqr and it's having value 4 okay and it's again now the last so now it's like that so you have actually appended things first of all you created a node then you stored its address in the previous one okay that's how you do things so what we'll actually do here is here you would be calling a while loop for this for iteration okay so here you can simply say current dot next okay what i'm trying to say that if the next is not null you would move the current pointer okay you would move the current pointer so for moving the current pointer you will simply say now the current will actually be pointing towards the next address next address okay initially the next address is actually xyz but for the first time loop runs this current will be actually now pointing to abc for next time the current will be now actually pointing towards pqr okay it's like that so it's actually pointing towards the addresses of next node when it's happening when you have the next address as not null you can see abc is not null pqr is not null at the end you can see that suppose now i want to append some more you can simply see that it's having next as null so this will fail that means the loop will reach till the end it simply says that you have reached till the end this simply means that you have reached till the end so when you reach till the end okay when you reach till the end you would simply say that current current dot next 
is actually the new node okay it simply means that now this is actually containing the address containing the address now i am here now i am here i have created a new node suppose i have created a new node right now we haven't linked it i would say that it's having a new node and again new node is created so obviously data will be there and it's next will be null you can see it's next is null now what i'll do is i'll say that since i'm at the last index last index of my linked list you would simply say that just call the address of the new node you have created and this would be actually pointing towards the new node so suppose the address of new node is lmn okay so it's actually pointing towards the new node okay so it's like that suppose the address of this was lmn so now null has actually changed to lmn okay so next time when i'm trying to iterate the loop will actually stop here then you can again perform append after this so it's like that okay so that's how append operation works here and now what i'll do is i'll just show you how this is uh, visible so for that i'll just call a display so that we can print this linked list okay we can just print this linked list for that i can simply say that let current okay let current equals her head okay whenever we are displaying something we can actually perform the iteration so for that you can simply say that initially you will be starting with the first node then you would say that if current is not equals to null okay uh yeah i need to actually show the last one also so i would simply say that if current is there okay then i would simply say console.lock its data then the next 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 so what would happen is at the end current dot next will actually become null so current is actually null so this loop will stop okay fine so now if i try to run this first of all i'll just append some values okay so for that i'll just say const my linked list okay we have created a linked list then i would say that i am appending some values okay so i would say that i am appending one two three four five okay so you can actually see that i have these values now i'll just display it okay i'll just display it so you can see i have appended five values now i'm just going to display it so let's run this so you can see now i have displayed those five values so you can see that it works very easily and you can just display their values what i can actually do is i would also uh say which address is actually pointing to so i would simply say the next address will be here okay so let's try to run this so you, you can actually see okay right now it's showing me an object object why it's actually happening here is okay um let's do one thing okay it actually doesn't show address like that so anyways you can see now we are actually pointing towards the next one all right so what now we can do is just a minute guys okay right now we uh, we are not getting address but still you can see what happens is if i talk about the first node okay i'm trying to display things you can see if i talk about the first node what I, what it actually does is you can see that it's pointing towards the next node like that now it's pointing towards the next node like that now it's pointing towards the next node like that and now it's pointing to the next node like that and now it's pointing to the next node okay it's like that and since next now equals to null next now equals to null it will stop this loop will stop so you can see we have we can see values of other but it's not actually there they are stored in some separate memory locations okay so you can see it works fine and uh, that's how you can actually play with the basics of linked list i have created a very basic linked list but today we have just performed the append operation in the next videos we'll be performing different operations like uh, we can actually delete any element from between then rearrange the elements also we can add an element in between in append operation we add element at the last but we can also add an element in between okay we can do that and also then there is also a prepend operation we'll see that okay so this will be done in the next video so for this video that's it and before ending this session if you have any doubts you can ask me in the live chat or in any of my videos so before ending this video you can visit a link provided by geeks for geeks just visit that link and it will take you to this page so 
it's available in the live chat or in the description so if you want to learn dsa in javascript you can check out this course all the details are available here you can check the course content also and it's actually required if you want to become a great developer and also if you uh, want to learn dsa in some easy language you can go for this one all right so i hope you understood this video and that's it for today i will see you in the next one till then see you have a good day bye bye